Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this A4M Dubai webinar conducted by Dr. Thierry Hetog on the topic of hormones and the skin for the anti-aging physician. I am Savannah Collette, the director of A4M Dubai, and I'm delighted to give you access to this completely free educational session, thanks to Dr. Hetog as well. This webinar is organized as a preview of the conference organized in Dubai from the 31st of October to the 2nd of November 2019. So if you like what you hear tonight, be sure to join us live in Dubai at the end of this year. I'd like to briefly introduce Dr. Thierry Hetog, who is Europe's number one BHRT expert and practices in Brussels, Belgium, lifespan, reversing, aging medicine, and hormone therapy. He represents the fourth consecutive generation of physicians specialized in the field of hormone therapy. He is an internationally known authority in medical therapies oriented to correct hormone deficiencies, reduce aging, or even on some aspects, reverse aging and possibly extend lifespan. If you do have any questions during or at the end of this webinar, please type them in the window that you will see on your screen. And we will address as many questions as possible at the end of this webinar for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Dr. Hetok's presentation is expected to last 40 minutes with a total of one hour for this webinar. Dr. Hetog, thank you for this session tonight and over to you now. Thank you, um, Servain. Thank you, Chanel, also from letting me to speak to the audience here. Um, I'm going to talk about this masterclass in hormone therapy that I think uh, will be extremely fascinating because it's um, uh, basically going to be extremely practical. And um, I think I can tell that I have improved my workshops, which already attracted um, a good audience before, uh, so that you really, when you go home, and that's um, you know how to do the therapies I'm going to teach uh, there. So there will be three days, and I'll basically talk a half day in the beginning uh, the f of the first day. And what, what I really want to make you uh, understand is that I really believe that a lot of aging is unnecessary now, and it's just a pure loss, a loss of health. Um, we are not made to age. I know we all age and that we cannot totally stop aging, uh, but we're going on um, uh, a route, actually, where we'll probably be able to not only stop aging, but also reverse aging. And um, Hormone therapies are basically the most important therapies we have now. I know they are peptide therapies, but I can tell you um, by experience that peptide therapies also help, but not in the measure that hormone therapies can do. And there are two uh, medical specialties that absolutely need to know this to get perfection in their profession is the healthy aging medicine, of course, to stay healthy uh, while you age and you advance in age, but also aesthetical medicine and plastic surgery, really hormone therapies will really boost the efficacy and also even the safety and the recovery of, with all, of all these uh, therapies. So you, you will have more more better effects with hormone therapy. So I really advise any any aesthetical medical doctor to learn uh, about hormone therapies to also add that to his therapies. And, and this is also the case also for plastic surgeons and even surgeons in general. So this is uh, basically how we age uh, for the moment. Without any treatment, we age and at 60, we look like the picture you see there and age 70, we look, uh, let's say even older. Um, what I really believe that will go is that when you get a person of age 50 and looking like a person of age in the future with um, hormone and peptide therapies, we'll be able to get a younger outlook, like age 60, for example. And um, so at age 60, treated will maybe look like age 40. And, and then age 70, uh, it could be that after 20 years of treatment uh, and you started at age 50, you look like a 30 year old, 35. This is not yet possible, but we're going into that direction. And, and we're, we're not doing just it for the aesthetics because at the same time, it's the whole health that improves inside. And this is why, because 
uh, hormone therapies are really the key therapies behind that. They are not alone. They need a very good diet. They need peptide therapies. They need stem cell therapy. They may need a little uh, aesthetic medicine also. Um, but but basically, you the hormone therapies will uh, play the central part. I see this. I see this in my own health. Uh, basically, um, uh, the performances of sp in sports that I can do with just uh, a moderate hormone therapy, so I don't overdose, um, are, are really, really important, of course, because I, I take a lot of different hormone therapies. I myself probably on 15 different hormone therapies. And I, I wrote a book um, recently that was recently published, like Reverse Physical Aging. It's it's part one, it's the, the head and the aging of the hair, uh, the aging of the senses and how to reverse it. And and um, even with writing this book, of course I have a lot of experience, but I, I learned a lot because I had to do a review of all what was existing. It's a textbook, this. And, and basically I, I saw that we already have a lot of keys actually to do this unexpected possibility of really reversing aging from inside to outside. And um, so in Dubai, the first day, it will be a special day um, that is uh, really focused on aesthetic medicine and plastic surgery. Uh, you can do this uh, day, I think, separately. If, and so you'll see how, how, how interesting it is. And, and I have also the pleasure that there will be a lot of other speakers in the afternoon. Uh, one will talk, talk about pain management, another on vaginal rejuvenation with hormone replacement therapy, one on PRP in gynecology also to treat stress urinary continence, lichen sclerosis, female sexual dysfunction and others. We'll be talking about growth factors for wound healing and cellular rejuvenation, laser stem cells, uh, also fat as a um, a new fountain of youth and, and, and then wellness infusion therapies. And I basically will already talk about the minimum treatments that you need to learn uh, when you do your anesthetical doctor, like the female hormones, the male hormone therapies, but also vasopressin treatment, um, growth hormone treatments, facial. And then, then I will have it also on facial hormone creams and systemic hormone treatments that improve surgery. Um, um, uh, recovery or um, also just the, the surgery during. Um, so, so I think it's really important. We'll also have a little short overview of all the, these hormone therapies. And um, But basically you really, really will uh, get a, a, some of the fascination that has determined my whole professional life. And I can tell you that uh, I, there's, no, there's not a week where I um, seem to discover new benefits from hormone therapies and a new uh, stronger safety. Uh, even this week was very, very fertile <laughs> and we're just two days in, um, in I would say, new, new discoveries or new indications of these therapies and new possibilities. So let's, uh, this Thursday we'll start with a sh short overview. Uh, we'll talk about the top hormones that help for basic aesthetic medicine and that actually are the top hormones to rejuvenate about growth hormone, IGF-1 and, and, and others, and, and, and then the, the male hormones, the sex hormones, the vasopressin. So we get a short, short order of a look, so you get a sort of um, already in the mind a, a differentiation. You can distinguish be, between what all these hormones do and what is the priority, what, what will work more than others have more potent and more, with more efficacy. Um, and then we'll go more in depth, uh, like safe thyroid treatment. And, and I'll talk to you about our family tradition. This is my great grandfather was the first in our uh, family to start uh, medicine and he was quite famous. He actually uh, taught about hypothyroidism, how to treat hypothyroidism uh, in the United States. And you can find in textbooks and, and, and medical journals, uh, pictures of his patients before and after treatment published in American uh, medical journals of that time. And, and, and this fascination that he had, he, he said to my grandfather, actually, he said, why do not other doctors see it? Because you can see it. Um, hormones shape the body of a person. Uh, they, they make you different. They make you tall, small, or, or whatever, or, or big, and etc. So depending on your hormone dose or your hormone deficiencies, you have another 
physical appearance. You can see it. You, you, and when you, you know that, uh, um, you're able to recognize, you can also know what other, what complaints that person has, because if, the, if that person has, for example, a testosterone deficiency, they are linked to special, um, I would say, complaints and signs. I'm a little focused on testosterone now because I'm, I think I'm, I'm working on a general public and a physician book on testosterone that I, I think will be a sort of breakthrough. Um, so um, here, uh, an, in in this uh, Thursday, on this Thursday, I will talk. I will try to make the link. What is really important um, for the aesthetical doctor to know about that hormone therapy? For example, thyroid hormones. They are one of the most important hormones to make hair grow quicker, better, and and more more, more abundant. So, for example, these are pictures uh, from patients. My great grandfather. You see that before, and then uh, they were complete, almost completely bald. And see that how this diffuse hair loss is completely restored just with one therapy, thyroid therapy. And and takes, uh, of course, time. It takes uh, more than four months uh, for any hormone to regrow hair in a visible way. Uh, but basically, the results can be. Um, um, very important, like you see here. Um, and, and we'll talk about details, we'll talk about doses you need to, to give, uh, what different products, and, and, and then there will be also on female hormone therapy, but I will talk on the next day in female hormone therapy in a way that probably not has yet been taught in the Arab countries um, and in a two or three um, hour uh, workshop, so that with female harm, all the different problems you can solve in women. And here it will be a shorter review, um, um, but sufficient for the surgical doctor already to be able to start treating uh, with this uh, treatment. And, and so we'll see, for example, um, the importance uh, for a woman to have a fem feminine face, and that is really determined by the female hormones. Um, I'll, I'll show a lot of pictures, so I, I think this is important for the doctor to, to get this uh, in their um, eyes that they are able to recognize. For example, when you look at all these women, you would say uh, at least one of them looks estrogen uh, sufficient or female hormones sufficient, and that is not true. They are all deficient. They all have a pale face, which is a typical mark of a lack of blood supply in the skin, and, and, and dry eyes, which is also due to a lack of uh, female hormones, and they all have flat hair, which is a typical sign of lack of female hormones. So I will teach you, but of course, women who are older and who are not treated with female hormones, they, they uh, have more deficiency, uh, estrogen deficiency, physical signs. So um, here we, um, and I will also talk about what this change of appearance that a woman gets once she gets to be a mother. And you would think this is normal. She's more mature, uh, etc. No, basically what happens is that due to the pregnancy, the ovaries don't work as well after pregnancy than before. And, and the woman gets to be female deficient, female hormone deficient after pregnancy, because when I have a woman who has had a pregnancy, I usually afterwards give her female hormones because I've detected these female hormone deficiency based on lab tests and, and then a good clinical examination. And then when I give her the hormones, she looks back as the young woman she looked before the pregnancy. And, and so this is so important to get your patients, your female patients, optimized with the female hormone treatment. So I will um, learn you about, you see all these women, they look, uh, yeah, of course, you would say they're exhausted, they have children, they don't sleep well, it's, that's why they look, no, they also look like this because they have the lack of female hormones. And that has been proven, I'll show that here's one of the studies, uh, older study in 2002, but it's still valid. This is really valid, nothing has changed. And then I'll talk that men can have testosterone deficiencies. Um, I'll basically talk about testosterone deficiencies that um, appear in adulthood. Um, and that starts at age 25 already. Uh, of course, often men need treatment around in the 30s. Um, but, but you have some men who never had enough testosterone to feel developed as full masculine. And so we'll talk about what to do in, in this circumstances and especially how to recognize um, that. You, you first need to be able to make a diagnosis before doing a treatment. Then you have testosterone keeps the chest masculine. As you see here, um, 
that sort of test is maybe even due to a slight overdose in testosterone, but basically that gives you an idea how testosterone can shape the body of a man. It's not exercise enough. Exercise cannot do this. You need to have, uh, for 70% to uh, is the work is um, is really having a, a high testosterone levels. And when a man does not have enough testosterone, he gets another type of body that is feminized because the female hormones tend to increase then and the male hormones to decrease that sort of body you have with abdominal fat and some gynecomastia and muscle flabbiness. And you see here, this is um, a young man receiving testosterone. You see what change in the body it brings. This uh, He had in his first... Um, and the first picture you see on the left is actually testosterone deficiency uh, already. Of course, not severe. Uh, he's not a castrate or something. You can say, this is okay. I'm like this. I'm fine with it. Okay. But normally, people who look like this pale, with dry eyes, flat hair, and things like that, they already have a sort of background fatigue and, and some um, even sickly can, are not fully uh, in a good performance and, and they may have a lower mood that actually um, goes away when you give a small dose of testosterone. So we'll, we'll, treat, uh, we'll try to teach how to correct with small doses the small deficiencies and never to overdose. It's not necessary to do that. Uh, it is better just to give the right dose. Uh, people feel much better like this and look better also. And then uh, we'll talk about testosterone treatment in women, and um, I'll focus, but it's not exclusively, on the ties of women. The ties of women with cellulite, that's typical uh, a leg that is testosterone deficient. And, 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 and we'll talk also about growth hormone deficiency, and we'll see that in growth hormone deficiency, you see how uh, the obesity can disappear or decrease. It changes the body composition, growth hormone, uh, into uh, what you see here on the right of picture, um, uh, takes out fat, increases muscles, increase body mass, mass, you have a real rejuvenation. You had a 42-year-old woman who often looks like a 30-year-old woman just by getting two years of treatment with growth hormone treatment. Um, it, it really changes her, her aspect. And this is not by an overdose. This is just correcting a deficiency that she had. And that was the reason why she was overweight. And many people is overweight have part of that overweight can be due or is due to a lack of uh, growth hormone. So uh, we'll try to learn that to correct. Uh, and, 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 and here again, uh, slides are a little mixed, but here's the cellulite you find in testosterone deficiency. And, and I'll tell you what is the most efficient treatment to reduce a cellulite with testosterone. And, and it will be injections and tell you of something about the doses. Uh, and and, and uh, there's a possibility of even giving a cream locally that could help. We'll talk about the efficacy. And then we'll talk about vasopressin. And when you look here, what you see is that vasopressin keeps the face uh, um, smooth. It is um, more efficient even than Botox to do that. And, and it takes all those dehydration falls away and, and the sunken eyes the, in the orbits. You see that people, when they advance in age, they need to go to the bathroom more often, uh, urinate large problems because they don't keep the water in the body. And that uh, is seen also on the face, that the eyes are deep in the orbits and a vasopressin can correct that and on the form of its synthetic derivative, desmopressin. And so we'll hear the growth hormone, uh, focus that growth hormone can increase the um, abdomen, uh, uh, but we, we've seen the pictures already before. Now, in the first day, I will also talk about facial hormone creams. And, and actually, um, here in Belgium, where, where I am, we're actually working more and more with uh, uh, topical creams when uh, we cannot have enough results uh, by a global treatment, systemic treatment, we apply the treatment locally and with more efficacy. And uh, so, for example, you have facial creams to reduce pigment spots. Uh, you see here and the, the, the change in our in aging skin uh, with vitamin C treatment uh, and, and melatonin treatment and, and before and after. And you see how our, um, younger the skin looks because melatonin has a very potent effect to rejuvenate the skin by uh, stimulating 
uh, proliferation of cells, keratin cells, other cells inside, and in a safe way because it's also an anti-cancer treatment. Uh, so basically, you get better results. But I have um, pictures in my library of patients with uh, white spots are with pigmentation spots in uh, regressing under a melatonin uh, application within the topical cream. And then also, for example, there will be uh, talking about uh, how to reverse sun or acne damaged skin, which, which hormones and how to do it. Uh, we'll talk about how you can avoid a scar, uh, hypertrophic scar formation and keloids uh, with skin creams are uh, eventually if they are there uh, is there possible to reverse we'll see if it is possible with those topical and um, we'll have um, life diagnosis all through I don't know if we'll have time we'll try to get some time in the first day but certainly the second and third day uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get the lectures uh, on time so we can get people from the audience going on stage and, and maybe you uh, if you're there uh, it really works well because once uh, one person has gone on stage everybody in the audience nearly wants to go because it's very respectful but you also discover in yourself what you can do and and how to improve a lot of things you thought was irreversible because you might still be in the belief that aging is inevitable and that we can just do a little thing to decrease it but we can do a lot and and I'll, I'll show you um, a lot about that so um, we'll talk about also uh, there will be a lecture on hormone therapies to improve surgery and and systemic hormone therapies to improve recovery after surgery or uh, to avoid adherences or fibrosis and things like that there are really systemic treatments you can do and 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 I'll, I'll give you some of those clues uh, during the, the 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 workshop um, there were the, even melatonin use cortisol use in safe in a safe way can be done um, but there are also other treatments so you uh, speed up the recovery with crowd and I'll tell you something about the doses uh, that can be doing and those who um, have to deal with surgery um, or have patients who go into surgery will be really interested in this because you 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 I, I can tell a lot of stories of what happened to a patient who should have been 14 days in hospital and was three days in the hospital because the treatments were so well we recovered so quickly so really you can boost uh, a lot the patients here and, and here's one of the treatments shows you glucocorts, you can avoid um, adherences and, and, and then also infertility in women that they have better pregnancy rate uh, when they get into uh, uh, after operations. Um, so we'll, we'll really get a lot of information. And on Friday will be the real full day, uh, one of the first of the two full days where I will uh, lecture and we'll talk about a lot of hormones, oxytocin, pregnant, the female hormones, IGF-1. And basically, the female hormones uh, will talk about also details. For example, how to what is the good diet uh, when you give female hormone therapy? Otherwise, the woman may increase in weight or may not respond well to the treatment. And, and here, for example, a slide about diet and accuracy will talk about how bad whole grain breads are. Everybody says you want to eat healthy whole, whole grain bread. It's one of the foolish um, things that can do when you know um, something about the hormones and I'll tell you why this happens why whole grains really um, are, are not good but also why other foods may not be good and why some foods are fantastic uh, when you give this treatment so basically um, you, you will get the information you really need to know when you want to be a, a master in uh, um, these therapies um, and, and especially um, took out some slides that are not so necessary kept the main ones so we have time for discussion and 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 your your valuable questions so here for example we'll explain um, and I repeat also because this is very important how to balance the female the estrogens and the progesterone because they have opposite actions and how to recognize uh, when something goes wrong if it's due to an estrogen deficiency or an estrogen excess or progesterone deficiency or estrogen excess um, the idea is not only you are know about it, be our mastering the information you get there. 
and uh, estrogen deficiency. Uh, for example, you have several symptoms like droopy breast, dry vagina, and 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 it's the opposite when there's progesterone deficiency. So so we'll 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 talk about extensively. Uh, so when you come into problems, you usually have one of the two groups of symptoms that appears and you know what to do. And um, we'll talk this in, in a lot of diseases, uh, endometriosis, uh, polycystic ovaries, but in a way that is not overloads you. The idea is not to overload you, is the idea is to make you know how to do it. And you see, for, for example, estradiol, what is the average daily dose that you can give? Um, what is the dose of progesterone? What are the best routes of administration? Uh, how to do the follow-up? All these questions that you need to have an answer uh, will be will be uh, raised and, and answered. So how to solve problems with female hormone therapy? That's the second part, uh, the delicate balance that I was talking about between these two groups of female hormones. And, and for example, when a woman has irregular periods or delayed menstruation, it's almost always an estrogen deficiency. And, and um, so, so what happens are then uh, explained so that you are able to know how to treat and and what dose exactly and and so uh, for example premenstrual migraine and headaches is um, um, there you don't need to add estrogen like in the previous example but here you need to add progesterone and and you add which days of the menstrual cycle you need to add it because we're not talking all about postmenopausal women only we're talking also about premenopausal women what happens at age 30 or 35 40 when you need to get female hormones how to master that and then breast cysts how to solve breast cysts breast cyst is a complete reversible pathology even if a woman has since 20 years recluse disease and and I'll, I'll will explain how and I can tell you that I already was talking about these uh, treatments in the AFRM um, um, recently but I can tell you there are uh, new discoveries so we can increase the efficacy and also decrease the risk of breast cancer there's sort of new strategy by putting locally a lot of nutrients and additionally to some hormones and, and iodine that and helps for, uh, against breast cysts uh, you might even get uh, better results uh, so endometriosis pcos etc and, and many other pathologies i think there's about 20 different uh, uh, female uh, hormone pathologies that are discussed and, and the keys for treatment are given then we'll talk about this igf1 uh, how, how you look at this, uh, these are two persons, completely different in muscular structure. What is the differentiation between the two mostly is the level of IGF-1. When you have low levels of IGF-1, look how thin you look and, and, and poorly muscled. And when you have too much IGF-1 by growth hormone overdose, you are um, uh, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger who, who, who uh, admitted that he took all these hormones in, uh, in, in excess uh, to win the, the bodybuilding championship. But you see the difference and, and so what I'm going to advocate is not overdosing, not underdosing, just find the right dose for every person and every person has different dose where he feels good and looks good with it. So there will be also explained what is the difference between growth hormone and uh, IGF-1 um, um, not only in fat mass or cholesterol, how, how they react, but also in, in on the sugar levels, how they react uh, 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 on the muscle mask, uh, the differences and things like that. And there are differences so that at certain age, at least at age 50 latest, you need to give both hormones if you really want to, to make that the patient does not age much or, or re, if you want to reverse aging. Growth hormone and IGF-1 are the most age-reversing hormones and they are not cancer-provoking uh, like uh, I would say um, um, people might think or, or doctors might think if they don't have enough information. Um, I think the, there are a lot of studies show how safe they are. Of course, I'm talking about physiological dose. I'm not talking about very high supraphysiological or pharmacological dose, which um, I'm not, I'm, I'm really an opponent of. I, I, don't, I think we should always find the right dose. Medicine is an art and in dosing of hormone therapies, learn the art. Exactly the theme of the, the workshop. 
learn to know the right dose that is adequate for every person and that's a different dose each time. IGF-1 treatment medications, for example, we'll talk about the, the one that is officially in, the, in, in a lot of pharmacies all over the world, and we'll talk about one that is more difficult to get the, the synthetic derivative uh, that is now in some pharmacies. Uh, I don't know if in Dubai, yes, they have that, but um, I'm, I'm informing anyway. Uh, it would be good to have that. Then you have the oxytocin, the hormone of affection, uh, a hormone that changes the life of people, makes autistic children much less autistic. I would even say non-autistic. I have some cases where they are not autistic, but if they stop the treatment, they get autistic again. Um, but it makes it does much more. It 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 it, it gives orgasm, much uh, increased uh, intensity of orgasm and quick orgasm. Uh, so for some women, really really a uh, very uh, key hormone for sexuality, and and it also makes people more affectionate, more uh, having romantic love, and, and does all, a lot of other things. It even protects the heart, it can uh, decrease cancer risk, and basically it even can decrease substance uh, misuse. If you um, have a, a patient with substance misuse, there are studies showing significantly with cannabis, uh, cocaine, marijuana, um, ecstasy use, um, um, and, and even cigarette craving and alcohol craving uh, seem to improve. So if you want to decrease that, take that, it will be easier to get rid of your addiction uh, because you just feel better with it. And uh, there's also pregnenolone, a very easy treatment that is given for short-term memory mostly, but, but basically it's also precursor to other hormones. All the adrenal hormones, even the sex hormones, can be made of pregnenolone. And then here, for example, it shows that uh, it, 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 uh, the amnesia that is so um, dreadful from benzodiazepines, because you know that benzodiazepines uh, not only uh, give uh, poor memory, but it increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease, Increased 30% cancer risk and four to five times, the, uh, two to five times, depending on the study, more mortality. So basically, benzodiazepine is not a solution. There are much better solutions, um, I can tell you. And and uh, pregnenolone decreased sedation uh, by benzodiazepine it kicks up. It gives you better attention, actually. And um, well, at the end of the day, so you will sleep better if you have a jet lag, don't worry. Um, maybe at the pharmacy, uh, there will be one or two pharmacies there. Uh, so maybe uh, you, you could buy what they, you need to sleep better. I'll tell you how to treat the jet lag and, and uh, basically uh, sleep more relaxed uh, throughout the night. I, I, wherever I go, I sleep six to eight hours. And one of the treatments is this treatment. It's not always a hormone. Is is uh, the hormone that relaxes uh, your uh, body the most is the neurotransmitter that decreases anxiety the most in our body, and that is GABA, uh, gamma, uh, gamma amino butyric acid. And, and uh, so when you don't have enough and you're tense and you're anxious, you're juicy or deficient. So this is the one that really can make you sleep the whole night through, completely relaxed. And and uh, if you have... Um, uh, it it's, it's, uh, takes out overwhelming anxiety. If you have physical anxiety, like trembling, uh, tense muscles, sweating, pinkering uh, uh, with thoughts, anxious thoughts all the time, uh, you, you feel something in your stomach, that's typically something that can recede with GABA. GABA takes out panic attacks. It also takes out alcohol cravings and things. So it's really, really very good. But there are some cautions. Some people do not tolerate more than taking it two or three days on a row. So uh, be careful. I cannot take it four days or the fourth day. I suddenly I'm too relaxed and I would say too calm down and I even feel uh, depressed or I even want to cry. So basically uh, you need to adapt the dose to the person. So um, this GABA, uh, there are a lot of studies showing that it induces sleep, and uh, um, um, this is one of the the major, um, uh, I would say, four uh, products that can increase uh, improve sleep uh, better than benzodiazepines. Uh, and then in Sat, the last day on uh, uh, Dubai Saturday in October, we'll have the hormone therapies to treat chronic fatigue and burned out. Burned out, being burned out and fatigue has a very important um, 
cause uh, um, that is actually due to hormone deficiencies, multiple hormone deficiencies, especially one hormone deficiency more than the other. And um, But there are so many different types of fatigues that you need to know how to know what is the principal likely cause behind that. And, and so what, what is a morning fatigue, afternoon fatigue, and things like that. And then we'll also talk about the therapies that can reduce or even reverse uh, totally uh, presbyopia. I, it's a, a condition that can be decreased and even uh, reversed. Uh, hearing loss also, don't think that this is again a reversible. I'm, I'm going to really challenge all of the false ideas people can have. And um, uh, about all these things that, that we were made to age and nothing can be done about it. Then how to reduce swollen or thin faces, how to reduce or erase wrinkles, uh, not with uh, technique or uh, just with uh, correcting hormone deficiencies and uh, possibly even locally in some case, but mostly uh, um, with a systemic treatment so that the whole body benefits from it. And then there will be, um, uh, we'll talk about sexuality, men, sexuality in women. And so, for example, how to go from burnout to high energy. I'll give you just an example. Today, I had in my office a woman who during 10 years was literally in her bed all the time, no energy. Now, since 10 years that she comes at my office, she comes from the States, it goes over to Belgium, especially for dad. She not only has a normal energy, she has more than normal energy. She works about 10 to 12 hours as a teacher, and you know, it's not easy as a teacher. She's 65 years old. She's uh, thinking now she will go work to 75 years. She said, you know, you changed completely my life, not only in the energy, but now I was a poor person. I almost didn't have the money to go to your place, but now I had, I could buy a house. I could work so much because she even worked in the weekends. I could buy a house. I have security. Uh, I have dignity back and things like that. And this, you can do this also to your patients. And um, uh, so getting the energy back with hormone therapies. And, and let's look here, for example, afternoon fatigue. It can be due to hormone deficiency, but basically it the, one of the most uh, uh, non-recognized deficiency behind this afternoon is magnesium deficiency. So I'll tell you why and how and how to recognize and things like that. You, usually they have also tense body that gives them pain when they have these muscular contractions. And, and the reason is also that magnesium is central. It works the, the, the mitochondria work where the energy is made. And, and so there's also a fatigue where you never can recover anymore in your life. If you uh, have this fatigue, exhaustion, uh, you, even if you sleep 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours in your bed, you still do not recover. If you have that, you almost certainly are growth hormone deficient. And, 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 and then you have this sort of fatigue. And, and, and sometimes growth hormone doesn't work enough because there's also IGF-1 deficiency. So you need to give the two hormones. And, and so basically you see how low the IGF-1 levels, insulin like growth factor one levels go. Growth hormone stimulates the secretion of, of IGF-1, but after age 50, not much. So you need to add it. And um, so, so we'll, we'll talk about all these things. So let's look now on, on the eyes. And you'll see that we'll, we'll, uh, I have overviewed all the scientific studies ever published on um, uh, nutritional tier students can improve your eyesight when you read, for example. And, and all these uh, proposals of treatment are based on scientific studies that you can find in my textbook of reversing physical aging that you can find on the uh, EU um, website. And, and also, for example, astragalus root extracts can improve the vision. And uh, in six weeks' time, that's used the time necessary, you really have a vision improvement that um, can, for some, be spectacular. Um, um, I, each time I took a different astrago science tech, this is, uh, I had such an improvement, I can be in the um, ones who respond positively. Um, and then we'll talk what is the mechanism behind those uh, things so that you are uh, feel more scientifically supported by and then also reversing hearing loss, it's an often uh, reversible condition. I, 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 and it's just 
with molecules of our body. And, and one of these molecules is IGF-1. It's not the only one, but IGF-1 has been shown to reverse uh, hearing loss in uh, people. There's at least one study, but a lot of studies in, in animals have shown that. And, and so I will explain uh, what to do um, uh, basically uh, to put it topically in, in drops and to reverse eyesight. Uh, so uh, you don't need to um, in, shout to your patient anymore. Patient can hear what you say uh, better. And, and how it works and it, it uh, wrecks you uh, also in the inner ear important structures. And um, the doses for um, that are necessary and then um, about the quantity that is, is taken to reverse the, the, the problem. Now, people um, tend to, when they age, many people tend to swell up. Um, others, even if they don't age, they swell up too. Um, so what is behind each um, swollen face? Here you have the puffy face, the premenstrually swollen face. Uh, uh, a woman can have estrogen dominance, have a more swollen, swollen face. You need to give them progesterone therapy, and I'll tell you what doses, what time of the menstrual cycle has to be given, for example, or can obese, and I will we'll tell also how to treat that obesity, or moon phase because of too much um, actually uh, cortisol in this case, and um, also the swollen, this typical swollen face or too much um, growth one. This is uh, the picture by a famous actor who was shooting himself with a lot of growth hormone, won't mention his name, but you see the difference uh, and appeared that he was taking too much. So too much of a good thing is not good and I'll really try to make you um, conscious of um, what the difference is and how to avoid the problems. Wrinkles, how to reduce them, um, we'll talk about the hyperdynamic wrinkles and, and, and what the hormone deficiencies are before, for example, uh, most of those hyperdynamic wrinkles, like the forehead wrinkles or the frown wrinkles, are the nasolabial folds and, and, and etc. Uh, are um, actually uh, due to um, uh, these um, growth one IGF-1 deficiencies and accessory uh, by sex hormone deficiencies. And we'll also I'll talk about dehydration wrinkles, uh, sharp and deep wrinkles that are usually due to a lack of aldosterone and vasopressin. So many things that you're seeing in your patients, you think it's normal, it's just aging, aren't you have before your eyes the cause and then you know the solution. So why not change it? Why not be this person who can make the difference? Uh, this is really, I think, really important. Um, uh, medicine has to be passion or it's not good medicine. And, and when it's passion, when you really want to improve you, you are, your your patient, uh, you, you, you really get a lot of rewards because the patient is also happy for what you're doing. You're finding the doctor that they need. They find finding the doctor who knows what other docs don't know and it's just before the eyes. Finding the clever guy. Um, and now, and about sexuality, it's very important. We'll uh, talk about increasing erectile function, of course. Um, I have, of course, much more information, and I try to select some information to the most essential, so we have time to integrate the information and not to be overloaded with too much information. So what type of erection should a patient achieve? How strong should it be? What hormones improve erectile function? Uh, how to improve ejaculation and, and how to... Uh, so, so you will have the good answers. Uh, we're not lacking or making Viagra or uh, Cialis. We're, we're lacking hormones, and 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 it's it's not testosterone that is the most potent hormone for erection, and and all depends on 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 what side of it. There are several aspects of erection, and actually it's a multiple hormone deficiency when there's erectile dysfunction. If you don't treat the multiple hormones, you don't get the the very good results that you can have otherwise. And what about sexuality in women? Uh, we'll talk about several aspects, even taboo aspects. I'll try to uh, be a little more careful, uh, not to be sh too shocking, um, but I think we need to talk about things that really matter to people, and they are, is, is, is not, so they have difficulties of talking about, and, and we'll talk in a medical way. So let's say a safe way to talk about it. It's not pornographic or something, but we still need to address the important aspects about sexual sensitivity, what the hormones are that 
increase most the sexual sensitivity in women. If you give finasteride to a woman um, and, and, and she doesn't have enough dehydrotestosterone, she will not be able to have such a good sexual sensitivity. So you need to be able to, to be sure that she has enough dehydrotestosterone, enough oxytocin to feel uh, sexual sensitive. An orgasm, for example, what are the hormones that rules the most? Oxytocin, male stimulating hormone, but even and also testosterone uh, and, and estradiol. So we'll, we'll talk about what difference are between these hormones, uh, what is the contribution they can have. But basically, it's important because life, it's not true that we're here on earth to suffer all the time. We're here to enjoy also life and to be happy and have pleasure and sexual pleasure is part of the happiness. And and um, so so I, I won't talk with taboos. Uh, I just try to be respectful and, and things, but we'll, I'll address what you need to know as a physician to help the patient be better. And then uh, we'll end up with again, life diagnosis and, 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 and um, I really advise you come with your lab test of yourself or of a patient and I have a projector I will bring with me so we can project the papers on the screen and, and we'll able to, to have this, this uh, and see it good and, and, and try to give also a lot of some uh, information uh, about uh, what the problem is. We, I can send you these uh, three slides if you want um, so that you know what to give us information, don't need to fill everything, but at least that we have some more information than just uh, a picture of a patient or just uh, one or two complaints. This is the books I have. I, I advise you if you go to the workshop, buy these uh, books before because and to read about because then you learn more in the workshop if you already are not legible about it. If you're just a beginner, these are the two books you you should buy and that you can find on the hurtalkmedicalschool.eu website. So these, the hormone handbook gives all the information about 18 hormone deficiency, 18 hor um, hormone treatments uh, with also uh, a lot of references and the atlas gives a lot of pictures, more than 650 pictures about 18 hormone deficiencies and 18 hormone sex. So you can recognize something is wrong, it's too much or too little, you can recognize it. Uh, and you need to, because this is, the, the hormones work in the cells and how can you see the action in the cells? Not in the blood, that's not much. It's in on the body of a person and, 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 on a, and, and with their complaints or his complaints. And this is then, of course, this book uh, also where you can buy it. Um, but I would say if you want to start hormone therapy, this is the book if you're an aesthetical doctor and you want to know the tricks and the tips and the solutions for everything that's aesthetical, this is then the book. Uh, they, 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 they're worth their price. If you want a copy of the presentation, you can uh, uh, ask um, my assistant on office at hertalk.eu. And um, survey, and I think um, I have finished now. I, if you want, we can have questions. Hello, Surveyn. Hello, Surveyn. Yes, Dr. Hetog, thank you so much for this uh, very insightful presentation. We will uh, now proceed to addressing some of the questions from the audience that have been typed throughout the presentation. If any of you have questions, you may now type them in. So um, we've got some thanks from the audience as well. The first question we received is, um, are you giving hormones if the pregnant mother is breast, if the mother is breastfeeding? Yes, um, and even female hormones. Uh, and it's very safe. I actually, um, when my wife was pregnant, um, uh, I found her a little tired and a little flappy. And um, I was uh, thinking that in Africa, for example, women who are breastfeeding during two years, and my wife did breastfeed during two years. It wasn't her intention, but she could continue because she was such in a great shape with the treatment. Um, we actually uh, gave her from the first to the 25th day of the month, uh, uh, basic dose of transdermal estradiol and 100 milligrams of myconized progesterone at bedtime. And, and basically she did well of it, but we started after one month after uh, the delivery because the first month they can otherwise be too much bleeding. The, the vagina and, 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 and the uterus have to, 
to, um, I would say, come back to their normal size of before. And um, 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 so, so you need to let this retraction process happen. And after one month that is safe, you can safely give the female hormones that will not mask, uh, feminize a, a baby boy or a baby girl. Because in Africa, uh, when they, are, they have their menstruations back at six months, even though they're breastfeeding, and, and basically nothing happens to the children. So I think it, it's safe. And of course, during the pregnancy, you need to slightly increase thyroid dose if the patient is on thyroid therapy. Um, even to my wife in the second pregnancy, I gave Grotamon, uh, only by identical hormones. So by identical hormones mean hormones with the same structure. And uh, with that, uh, she also had a better energy and was is better for the baby. I, I saw that in the studies on animals in pregnancy, um, that they actually the calves of cows, for example, are much better shape and, and a little bigger. And um, there are also two studies have been published since then um, on pregnancy uh, with growth hormone and, and no problem actually. So, so most treatments can be given, uh, for example, during the pregnancy, um, if a, a patient is too low in cortisol, there's a, a lot of vomiting or too low in progesterone, there can also be a lot of vomiting. So in most pregnancy, what I, I almost certainly give, because women have their pregnancy older here on the European continent, is a, a progesterone, 100 milligrams progesterone, um, because they, are, they seem not to make enough, and then otherwise they would tend to have more contractions, the uterus too soon, and they would swell up uh, too much, and progesterone takes out the swelling, and it also takes excessive vomiting away. Uh, often. So basically, you could give the same hormone therapies, but you need to adjust the dose and try to give only by identical hormone therapies. If it's not, then I tend to not to take it, take it away. Is there okay, any other questions? Yes, we have a lot of questions. So the second question we received earlier on is, are hormone deficiency required to be proven by serological tests prior to treatment? Well, you need to, to show uh, to your other doctors, uh, because a patient has several doctors often, that you're doing a good job. So if you don't do lab tests, um, I think it's, it's unwise uh, with the controversies that are still there around uh, therapies, and so you try to do it. Um, and there are a lot of studies, everything will be, all these studies will be published on the International Hormone Society website within three months. There are a lot of studies that show that within the reference range, low normal levels, let's say below the, in the lower half of the reference range, are linked to uh, significantly more uh, risk of disease and even premature death. That that means that if you treat a patient with a level within the lower reference range, uh, but still within the reference range, you're safe because you can justify scientifically that if you don't treat, the patient might develop more disease. So you need it more as justification, and it does help you to know uh, how intense the deficiency is. So I still would do that. Um, um, it will help you to do a better job and to make it uh, safe for you in, in front of medical boards. Okay, Excuse thank you very much. Yeah. Next question, how effective is CJC or tesamorelin in male age 68 years old compared to GH? Well, um, uh, the CHG I think stimulates um, the secretion of Grautuba. Um, and uh, so the semerolin and, and, and also improve IGF-1 secretions and things like that. Um, but the older you are, the less it works. Um, so basically, you still need to take Grotamon, and at age 68, uh, uh, you're um, already since uh, age 30, uh, so already since 38 years in deficiency. Uh, so uh, I think you should uh, uh, take the other products that you're there um, um, as additions, but uh, it should not uh, replace the real treatment. If you can't okay. take Grotamon, it's better to take Grotamon. Uh, as a first choice treatment and maybe add the other ones. Okay, and what are your thoughts on bioidentical natural progesterone cream for men as regards to helping with BPH, increasing libido, sleep and weight loss? Yeah, so um, I, I believe that every man should take um, progesterone 
I must admit that I often forget to take mine, but it's going to change because I had, uh, that's one of the insights as I have is that um, when you put in suppository progesterone uh, in the man who has prostate hypertrophy, it regresses. You have a 20 to 40 percent decrease in prostate volume within six months if you give 100 to 150 milligrams, depending on the size of the prostate. Progesterone suppository is 15 days a month. Um, so I believe, um, and really, uh, you can give a transdermal um, progesterone, but then you have to put on high absorption place, like the face or the upper part of the chest, where you get, where you blush, where you get red. There's more blood vessels, and then you can also decrease the prostate size, but not as much as you really put it locally on the prostate. Now here's the news: is that basically a lot of in vitro studies have shown that many um, nutrients like selenium, coenzyme Q10, uh, sulfur, and things like that uh, decrease metaplasia or uh, the malignity of cancer cells. So if you put it also in the suppositories next to progest all these nutrients, you might even have a um, um, uh, a very protective role against prostate cancer. So I believe in progesterone, uh, but it's not the only thing that also should be added to people uh, to avoid prostate hypertrophy. And don't forget that most of prostate hypertrophy are due to coffee drinking and to alcohol drinking because these two drinks increase the levels of estradiol and estrogens. It, con it increases the conversion of testosterone to female hormones. So you feminize with these uh, treatments. So two cups of coffee a day increase 60% the estrogens and, and one glass of wine a day, a 60% increase of estradiol. And that means that the higher the estradiol levels, the more there is uh, fibrous tissue in the prostate, the more the prostate, there's prostate hypertrophy. So you have to stop drinking caffeinated coffee, take decaf, and uh, take alcohol-free beer or alcohol-free alcohol or just drink water. Okay, another question. Who needs to stay away from hormonal therapy? Who needs to take away? Those who are post-hormonal therapy so that we don't have to... Uh, especially those authorities who, who are posted so that we, they, they don't live so long. Um, but basically, this is a joke. I think everybody has to take hormone therapy till the end of his life. Um, even a cancer patient actually needs, a uh, breast cancer patient and a prostate cancer patient actually need to have hormones. Of course, you need to do it safely. Uh, you may not have, uh, for example, the sex hormones, what is called estrogen dominance. Neither for a man, neither for a woman. That means that um, studies have shown that when women get after breast cancer um, estrogens, they have uh, 20 to 80 percent decrease in mortality in the next five years. They have um, a between 20 and 50 percent decrease in recurrence of breast cancer uh, if the next uh, um, um, next years. Um, and, and this is uh, even minus 70%, it wouldn't have the less dangerous form of breast cancer with a lot of estrogen and progesterone receptors. Uh, prostate cancer is the same. Um, there are 21 studies showing there's no bad to give the, the hormones after cancer. So, 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 so prostate cancer, to give testosterone after prostate cancer, there's even one study showing four times less recurrence of prostate cancer in prostate cancer patients on testosterone treatment. So things look safe, but you may not have too much female hormones formed because that gives metaplasia if it's excessive. Uh, estrogens are not dangerous except if they are excessive. So you, you need to be able to monitor that well. That will be discussed also in the workshop so that you can make it safe. Thank you, Dr. Hetog. Um, is hormone therapy effective for scars, keloids, old or new? Well, it's, it's more, much more effective to avoid. So systematically, when I have a patient, I give them a cream with um, uh, cortisol and testosterone. It's mostly the testosterone that's important there. And uh, they have beautiful scars. Yeah? Uh, um, usually people with keloids are people who are adrenal deficient. They are low in cortisol and they inflame all over the body. So the treatment uh, to prepare a patient who makes easy keloids at a surgery is to give an anti-inflammatory diet so they don't inflame, to correct any adrenal hormone deficiency, 
And um, one of the treatments also that helps decrease um, inflammation uh, uh, is, uh, well, for the diet, it's eating fresh vegetables and fruits and avoiding any carbs and uh, unsprouted carbs and uh, sugars and sweets. Um, but it is uh, to give sulfur, MSM. Uh, methyl uh, sulfonyl methane uh, and that powder I take every day uh, 15 grams in the morning 15 grams in the evening with that powder uh, you, you decrease a lot of inflammation I had uh, let's say inflamed back and uh, get got away with with this um, uh, so so it really helps but it has a terrible taste and you need to take a powder not the capsules because they don't work the capsules you need the powder you can also take more of that uh, so um, Keloids uh, can be avoided. Now, once you have them, they're more difficult to get away. You still need to cut them away and then to have a new scar and then you do the treatment and that works well. You, uh, there are studies uh, showing that you can inject in the lesion of the keloid cortisol and that reduces uh, the keloids, uh, but but it's, it's somewhere too late when there's fibrous tissue. Now, here I'm talking um, maybe wrong I'm giving you maybe wrong information because um, I treated a horse who had a, a very thick capsule, like a sort of keloid around the foot since two years. The veterinarian said, I cannot do anything. It's a high competition horse. And uh, I said, well, if you cannot do anything, uh, what can I do? Well, he said, you maybe where's your medicine? Then I, I was thinking, and then I said, well, um, when you give uh, fish oil uh, or, or omega-3 uh, oil, like linseed oil, you make everything very flexible. And then uh, vitamin E is uh, takes out fibrosis. And then uh, vitamin D is anti-inflammatory. So I made a cream with the tree in. And uh, extraordinary, this very thick capsule that's sort of keloid cut away in three days. Most of it was, was very flexible after three days. So maybe there's a solution there, but but I ha I think I, I tried it in one or two patients and and uh, I didn't get the feedback from it, so I, I'm not sure uh, it, it has worked. But but it works terribly well in, in animals because I've tried it. So, um, um, but but what certainly will work better is take the keloid away and uh, then uh, to give the treatment with testosterone and. Uh, the one percent or three percent uh, hydrocortisone cream. Thank you, Dr. Hintog. We'll take two more questions and close this session. Um, I would like to know how to treat Hashimoto thyroiditis with symptoms. Would you treat using T4 and T3, and in which yeah. dosage approximately? If anti TPO 1300, and what else should should I do? Well, for Hashimoto, um, Hashimoto the the reason is um, hormonally thyroid deficiency and cortisol deficiency, so adrenal deficiency, and but there is also leaky gut. That means that you are doing like everybody else. You're eating proteins in the evening, so you're destroying your gut and you're putting yourself in hypothyroidism the whole night. So I'm, I'm against eating proteins in the evening because then you have this fat belly or bloating belly the whole time. So you need to eat a paleo diet, uh, fresh vegetables and uh, uh, fruits. You may have to a certain time to, to eat even boiled vegetables. You really have a lot of digestive problems to boil everything. And um, then to um, treat important nutritional deficiencies that usually Hashimoto have. They, um, uh, the two main ones, uh, the three main ones, the, uh, are uh, vitamin D. You need to take at least 10,000 international units uh, a day of vitamin D, and that's very safe. No problem. Uh, if you exercise, you can even go to 20,000. It should be a very high, uh, good levels. And um, and uh, selenium, like 400 micrograms a day, two times 200 micrograms during uh, selenium methionine, uh, for example, during uh, four months, and then you go to 200 micrograms. And in, within six to nine months, you'll decrease by 50 to 70% only with this treatment but you still need to do a diet take out milk products also they destroy your intestines they you cannot digest them well and um uh, there's also iodine but iodine has some mixed feelings it, it really helps uh, to uh, decrease when there's a uh, uh, autoimmune disease with excess thyroid hormones um, um so um uh, 
you get, take Lugol solution, 5%, that's a, a sort of solution of iodine, and, and you take uh, uh, something like five drops a day. I personally take two times eight drops a day. Uh, that's a very high amount without any problem. I take it for order to fight down uh, virus infections, chronic virus infections. I want to, uh, I saw, uh, to, to get uh, rid of things that I find I want. Uh, and um, the doses that you need to, the, the treatment that you need to get for the thyroid treatment is, I think, always thyroid extracts. Uh, you need the porcine origin, even if your religion says you may not eat porcine meat for medication, you can. And um, the best in the world, I think, is Urfa. Second best is Armour Thyroid. As this get a thyroid, third is maybe Nature Thyroid, or this one in also that is not bad in, in Thailand. And um, that works better because it has a 24-hour effect, more stable effect. Uh, thyroxine itself is not sufficiently uh, absorbed and the T3 is too quickly absorbed. So it's better to take it um, linked to thyroglobulin, that's thyroid extracts, it's like this, and then this bigger protein will release slowly all the uh, thyroid hormones. And the doses, are, it's very variable. It can be um, 30 milligrams to 120, 150 milligrams, depending on the extent of your thyroid deficiency. So, um, but you need to treat that only giving the enough thyroid hormones, treating the, the hypothyroidism that is often but not always linked with Hashimoto disease, helps also to decrease the thyroid antibodies. And I had some patients who was totally free of uh, autoimmune disease uh, by this way, but they have to do a sort of combination of all these treatments. Next question. Okay, and one final question. Will ketosis affect cortisol requirement or dose? Um, will oxytocin and, uh, affect cortisol? Is that the question? Ketosis. Keto ketosis, okay, if you go on a sort of fasting and then you eat uh, proteins, you get ketone bodies. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, fasting tends, if there's fasting, it tends to increase uh, cortisol levels in general to compensate for the hypoglycemia, there's a low blood sugar in, in ketosis, and, and, but, but um, there's also the acidoketosis, so I'm not sure about uh, if it's the ketosis due to fasting or is the acidoketosis due to, for example, uh, a diabetes coma. Uh, I suppose it's more uh, the one with ketone bodies and, 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 and where there's a sort of fasting and there's low, low sugar, um, high fat diet or high protein diet. Uh, well, in, in the, if the sugar level goes down with that, you generally have an increase of cortisol. So it's not the, 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 the treatment um, to lower cortisol. It's, it, it rather increased the fasting. Yeah. So I think that's Thank you so much, Dr. Hedog, for all those very detailed answers. We will now be closing this uh, webinar session. If any of you have any more questions that you would like to address Dr. Hedog, you can simply answer the email you will be getting from our team tomorrow morning. The email will also be containing a link with a copy and a recording of this presentation and a special offer for you to attend our conference starting 31st of October for three full days in Dubai. We hope to see you there for what promises to be a great event with Dr. Hetog. And thank you again, Dr. Hetog, for taking the time to present this uh, extensive presentation. And we hope to see you all in Dubai soon. Thank you. Thank you, Surveyn. Thank you, Sean. And uh, thank you also for the, all the audience for being there, taking the time to listen. Thank you, and I hope to see you in Dubai. Bye-bye.